First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Episode 20, What Is and What Should Never Be. Never Air date, April 27th, 2004. <laughs> wow. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Drama Queens. Um, hey, it's kind of a special, um, it's a special episode today because Sophia is off on her fabulous new show, Good Sam, and we are so proud of her. But she is, uh, her schedule prohibits her from being with us today, but we have an amazing yes, we girl do. in place of her. An amazing Another bad girl. Hillary. <laughs> Another bad girl. <laughs> Hillary, <laughs> take it away. Oh my gosh, you guys. I think we've made it pretty clear that we've got a big crush on Nikki, our very own Emmanuel Vagé. So let's just bring her in here. Let's bring her in to hit up episode 20. Hello. <gasps> Hi. Oh, oh, look how beautiful you are. Oh, my oh. gosh. It's great to see you. Oh, my God. Thank you. It's so great to see you guys, too. My God. Have your ears been burning? Because we have just been talking about you for weeks now and about what a good badass you are. Well, you know, well thank you. I, I was um, I listened to the podcast episode because I was like, OK, I got to listen to an episode <laughs> to see what's going on. And, yeah. Uh, I listened to the one, the Sparkle Pits. Episode. Oh my god! Where was I for that? <laughs> yeah, I know. Wouldn't that have been great? Right? Were you a cheerleader in high school? No. Well, it, growing up in Canada, it's not as big oh, of right. a thing. Oh, it's, it's not a big, thing. There are cheerleaders, but I mean, had it been the way it is in the states, I would have been like all over it because I love that stuff. But um, yeah, it's not. It's not at all the same thing. So no, I was. I would have made a terrible cheerleader. No way. It's not too late. We could start like a midlife squad. Like, I feel like people do weird things for exercise. I'm so into that. Where are you right now? I'm in Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver. Fantastic. I geek out over you, Emmanuel. Everyone knows that Peyton had a huge crush on Nikki, even though it was suppressed. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's where all the tension comes from. (laughs) Yes, Yes, we saw that. Um, So... There's so much to talk about with this episode for me because uh, this was kind of like a sleeper hit episode for me because when it started, Hillary and I, were when we were watching it, we were like, this is kind of, it's just a catch up. It feels like we're just catching the audience up on a bunch of stuff. Like, nothing's happening. I don't understand what this episode is. And then it spun <laughs> into so, but the, all this tension between Nikki and Peyton, between Brooke and Peyton, between Dan and Deb. Um, the sort of release of Keith and Karen finally letting each other go. Um, and Haley throwing her first party, which we Aww, have to talk about at some point. Because good job. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. So I I, I loved uh, seeing Nathan in a new job. And uh, I loved also the uh, Peyton Lucas armpit action on oh the my God. basketball court. Can we talk about that for a second? What oh. was going on? Awkward episode overall. Um, Yeah, they decided to kick things off with a little sexy energy of like Peyton stretching out Lucas's shoulder. What was that? Is that a real stretch? (laughs) But they didn't even show you stretching his arm. It just the shot was like slightly below his shoulder. So it really just looked like you were in his armpit, like just digging around for a minute. (laughs) But it only lasted like a few seconds, and then Sophia flies <laughs> and is like, "What is this? <laughs> what is this?" It's like this awkward, you know, yeah, armpit moment. Armpit like, love. That's not what we were going. That's not sexy, no, guys. No, no. That's not fun. I mean, you know, so like we we have immersed ourselves in like the high school drama of it all, which we see on full display in this episode. When you first signed on for One Tree Hill. What did you know about what you were stepping into? Because you really did come into a tornado. I had no idea. I mean, like they, you know, they brought me in to read. There was just limited sort of information about it. All I knew was I, I was the new sort of. Baddie? You can the baddie sort of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and all that it was is just what was revealed in the sides, really. And it was um, the two scenes, like the carousel episode which i i hear was very controversial Ooh. like i was like i'm listening to the next podcast i'm like uh-oh what did i what what happened i don't remember anything <laughs> oh, what am i stepping into um 
but uh, but it was that in the you know the bar scene where I'm sitting at the bar with with Lucas and um, and we're talking like the the bus of the crashing of the bus. I, I remember that being like the audition scene. Yeah, that's all I knew. The magic trick scene where right, you're like yeah. lighting stuff on fire. Was Nikki a pyro? You know, she might have been, from the way things look at this point, a little bit of a pyro, a little bit of a witch. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, because let's that, go down that, that road. Can we go down that road? Let's do um, it. Is Nikki a witch? I'm asking as a witch. I think she is. I think yeah. I think she's a, 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 a dark witch. I don't think she's a, uh, she doesn't work for the light. Right. She's not like a, <laughs> a, a farm witch or a kitchen witch. She's like, no, I strictly work in hexes. Yeah, yeah. she's an angry girl. <laughs> She's an angry girl. She's she's the picture of like what you see when you look up witchcraft in the dictionary and like, you know, there's some evil looking, you know, sorceress type thing over a crystal ball and like flames behind yes. her. Satan. But you know what? There's a difference because that, that is an e- sort of an easy trope to play. But you added more layers and you that's I think one of the things we always loved and respected about your performance is that you it wasn't just ha ha I'm the bad girl twisting my mustache and you know perking my eyebrows like there was some substance behind yeah. where Nikki was coming from and you could see the pain in spite of all of her bizarre antics um and I mean was there a lot of character work for you when you because there was there were so many scenes when you were like trying to get Jake back together with you and you seemed really sincere and I believed yeah. that this is something Nikki actually really did want she was just in her own way so much she didn't know how to really go after it and you know clean up her life but i'd love to know about if you remember any specific character work you felt like you had to do um to prepare for this or to get into it i remember my my main thoughts on it were you know it's like you said it's easy to fall into the trope of like i'm just going to be the big bad you know and yeah come in and the mustache twirling like and the big like screw you everybody and like (laughs) watch me do this um so i try i i remember thinking going and saying to myself you know there's got to be a reason people can relate to her like uh, like her even though she's vile and 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 the her actions contradict some of the things that she says uh or some of the actions that she's had in the past so there needs to be vulnerability and some sort of uh redeeming qualities about her that that are genuine but yeah. Yeah. like you said because there's so much her life is so much of a mess uh, that that stuff overshadows, uh, you know, it, it pulls her out. She has moments of clarity and kind of wanting to be that person. But then inevitably she's so stuck in that world of like survival and everyone screwed her over or, or in her head. That's, you know, that's the story. Um, but yes, but not falling in like, that was the main thing. I was like making a big effort not to fall into the trap of just being uh, the villain, so to speak. Well, Uh, she's like the teenage female Dan Scott. You know, both of them have kids that they're not necessarily ready for at a young age. Interesting, yeah. Dan disappeared on Lucas, and so Nikki's trying to do the opposite. She's trying to, you know, come back and, and make up for things, and it's not going the way that she thinks it should be going and that's frustrating and then every time she thinks she's helping someone like lucas or she meets brooke tonight in this bar she's like i'm gonna help you i'm gonna do you a solid and then everybody turns on her i can see why nikki is just like i hate all of you you guys are so messy (laughs) i tried to help you you ruined it i tried i tried to help you and this is what i get even though she nikki takes it always like one step too far (laughs) yeah yeah i mean what what cracks me up though is in the party scene i'm watching i was like okay mental note you can't drink that much straight vodka like i'm constantly like i'm just downing vodka and i'm like i think on the floor (laughs) yeah i would too Repouring it into like the Brooke is mixing <laughs> like beer and liquor, and I'm just like, no, oh, no, don't God. do it. <laughs> Terrible so idea. This whole, had you ever worked in Wilmington before? No, that was the first time, and I loved Wilmington. It was like such a, I mean, just such a quaint, sweet town that I wish I'd gotten to see more of. Uh, I, yeah. I, I think I ate at every restaurant on that row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. One main road. Yeah. And um, and I I remember hey, like always like either like Paul ended up having similar schedule. We had time off, so we would Paul and I would hang out a lot. And I distinctly remember 
where he lived in downstairs, there was a restaurant. She, he would keep like a case of deluxe in, in the back. Yeah, I, I don't. What was it called? It was deluxe. Deluxe. Was it okay? It was, it, and it was deluxe. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had that like fabulous steak that had what was it, like blue cheese on top. It was some like you know back then that we were all insane. mystified by the fancy food below mm-hmm. Paul's apartment. I but know. Paul's a good date. Paul's a good person to explore any town with. Yeah. Were you at the Riverview Suites? I was. Mm -hmm. It was like our dorm, really. Because Antoine was was there. Who else was there while you were there? Um, Jake, Jake, Brian, Jake, Brian Greenberg. Yeah. Yeah. I think we were neighbors at one point. Like it was, yeah, it was like, it was like a dorm. It was, it was pretty, because yeah, everyone was there. That was the, it was that hotel. And then there was the other hotel at the end of the row there. It was down. Oh, the Wilmingtonian? No, no. You no. mean the one on the water? Yes. Yeah, the, it was like a Hilton, I think. Oh, okay. Just, well, listen, I remember thinking, yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's the fancy hotel." We've also <laughs> been raving. <laughs> we've been raving about Greenberg on this show too. I think we get in trouble because we put him on a pedestal, and we're just like, "Jake, Jake, Jake, Jake." But he's so easy to love, Jake, Jake. Um, for you, had you and Brian ever met each other before, or you were just immediately, you know, thrust into this young parent lifestyle? Yeah, so we were thrust into it. You did good work together. Oh, thank you. He was easy. I mean, like, he was really easy to, to play. I mean, everybody was so wonderful and great to work with. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody was solid and just brought, you know, brought their A game to the table. And it was, like, such a pleasure to be on set with that. Well, I'm just going to say it, too. Emmanuel, we were all intimidated by you because you were so good oh, and you yes. were so pretty and you were just, like, a force. And so I think we all brought our A game because we're like... I mean, I can speak for myself and be like, please like me. Please like me. I think you're yes. so cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, thank you're you. Cool. I I remember just being like, okay, all these guys know each other. And they're, you know, it's like being the first new kid at school. Because I was like, oh, they're all. And I was like, I hope they like me. I hope I'd be like, okay, I'll just stay quiet. Stay to myself. I know Paul. Um, <laughs> you know, like, I'll just so was that the like, Canadian connection? Is that how you two connected? <laughs> You know, yes and no. I I had run into, I can't remember if that was the first time Paul and I actually hung out, but, and became friends. But I remember coming up to him, maybe it was there. And I, I said, you know, the first time I met you, it was when I first moved to LA, I was like 19 years old. And I was walking down the street in Beverly Hills with my little teeny tiny white teacup poodle. I remember the poodles. (laughs) I was going I was going to the coffee bean to get an ice blended vanilla ice blended because that was my treat for the day mm. and I come walking up and all of a sudden this great Dane rears up on its hind legs and like is like rawr, 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 rawr. oh like, my gosh and, and I look over and Paul this tall handsome mm-hmm. you know dude he's like oh hello and starts talking to me and and that's how I met Paul you're like, is your animal going to eat my dog? Can you yeah, calm him down? dog almost ate my dog. It was, the, that dog was bigger than I was. It was this. That massive, was Damascus. Dema- was that Damascus? Was that okay. his name? Wow. Damascus, yeah. Of course Paul had a great day. Like, of course. <laughs> it just, <laughs> that tracks. Okay, so let's, you want to get into the episode, Joy? Let's dissect. Uh, Yeah, I mean, well, let's talk about, um, I I would love to talk about Brooke and Peyton. Let's start with there and uh, getting into this great fight, which, uh, well, let's start start with Brooke and Peyton. This fight is legendary, Emmanuel. I hope that you know that people bring it up all the time. (laughs) And I'm always like, we had fun that day. It was so, um, it looked so real. It was, you know, it started out a little dynasty and then it went into (laughs) another level of, it looked very real, like a good scrappy street fight. I was like, okay. We've got the dynamic of like the failed romantic relationships in this episode, whether it's like Nikki and Jake or Brooke and Peyton and Lucas, you know, or Deb and Dan. Um, But those friendship relationships you know this breakup between Peyton and Brooke holds a lot of weight and it's devastating yeah. and I think that they're more broken up about that than necessarily like well, the boy. Brooke and Peyton need each other they, they're kind of alone in the world I mean I haven't seen Peyton's dad in a while again mm-hmm. um who knows what's going on with with Victoria and Brooke's dad and and 
you know, she's always just alone. So to see these two girls who have clung to each other in the storms of life be, you know, thrust away from one another by some dr dramatic circumstances is hard to watch. And I felt really bad for the two of them. And especially at the end when they were laying in bed, just talking and I felt I could see the two little girls, like, how do we get mm -hmm. back to each other? We need each other, you know? Well, it felt like cheating, like watching Brooke and Nikki have fun together in the bar and then roll into yeah. that party. I was like, what the what is yes. this? Like, <laughs> friend cheating. Have you guys ever had a friend cheat on you before? Ooh, sure. Yeah. Well, yes. and in high school, it's that much more like that's just yeah. a, a big deal because it's everything to you. And you yeah. haven't sort of figured out like, okay, I can take a step back and it's, gonna be, <laughs> it's not the end of the world. I can go talk but, to yeah. someone else for a week. Like, <laughs> what yeah. is loyalty? Because I, you know, you're still trying to figure things, those concepts and themes out when you're in high school, the concept of loyalty. If, if I don't like someone, is my friend therefore obligated to not like that person because I don't because if you're my friend and that person was mean to me then you stick up for me by not liking them too and then we're both a yeah. force against that person you know I mean that's definitely how a lot of high school that's how I thought in high school in a lot of ways too so I think that plays out for sure obviously mm -hmm. it's not and adult, I don't but... think it I don't think it helps that the person that Brooke is cheating with is also someone connected to Jake who Peyton has shown like a little bit of interest uh, in. Yes. Another. And then the Lucas revelation is just. Well, it's like all the cards are put out on the table in every relationship in this episode. Like you said, Joy. It's yeah. Like everything comes to a head and it just, it's sort of like, bam, here it is. Now what? <laughs> you know? Like... Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it's, when you meet people that are similar to you, who have all the same interests as you, it's hard not to be competitive. So it tracks that they like all the same boys. They like the same girls. They hang out in yeah. the same places. And so that- Like bars kind of that serve high schoolers <laughs> alcohol. Oh <my> <laughs> what is this bar? What is this bar? Every time anybody from our show goes there, they get served, even though they're under. Did you party at the Blue Post when you were in town, Emmanuel? If I that did, bar? I don't remember it, which would be probably a yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good time. Huh? It was a great time. The bartender, <laughs> the bartender who's had all the scenes with you is a guy named Dean, who we made friends with because he was a part of the improv comedy scene in Wilmington. Um, and he hosted the karaoke nights at Level 5 for a long time. So it was like they got our bartender to be the bartender in the show. I love that he did give one look when you ordered the vodka for Brooke. He just like kind of threw a look over his shoulder like, hmm, she's in high school. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to serve her, but it's in the script. So yeah. whatever. It'll be fun. <laughs> did you party in high school? Um, Towards the end of high school, yeah. I remember park parties were a big thing in, uh, I don't know if that was a thing. What's here. a park party? Park parties, like, because you were underage, right? So you would like, everyone would like be like, okay, let's meet it. Um, you know, such and such a playground at such and such a school. <laughs> and bring their beers and like, you know, and you'd sit and ha until the cops came and then you'd all make a mad dash for it, hide your booze in the bushes and then like <laughs> run off. It was the most ridiculous thing, but it's like, if we couldn't find somebody's house, then that's what we would go do. Yeah. Um, so that was- Park parties. Park parties. We're gonna, this is the like urban legend stuff I would hear about as a child. Like you'd go yeah. and there'd be graffiti all over the playground. You're like, who does this? Yeah, right. It's those park oh. party kids. That's <laughs> right. Those kids. Those kids. Roughing guys, up the place. Did you guys party in high school? Well, so I was a real clean teen. Like I had a group of friends and we didn't drink and we didn't smoke and we didn't hook up with dudes, but we would go to the parties and just kind of, you know, when you know and you're going to get made fun of. Yeah. Judge <laughs> when you know you're going to get made fun of. So you just like own it real hard and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to, you know, make it a thing. Um, we ended up making fun of it in the show. I didn't party much either. I was a pretty, I was a pretty tame kid. I mean, I definitely relate to Haley feeling like nobody's going to show up if I throw Aww. this party because I have for sure thrown a couple of f uh, fet fets. I don't know. <laughs> um, that nobody, that like very slim pickens shows up at and then I'm just sitting there alone. Like No! Wait, okay, so let's talk about the Haley party throwing it all because I loved how John Hughes, this storyline was for you. You looked the part. You had like 
the 16 candles top on, which Aww, I love so I much. It's so cute. My hair got increasingly more curly as the episode went on. And I don't know if that was the weather or if it was me being like, I don't care if it doesn't match. I want it curly, which is totally possible <laughs> that I did that when I was It was 20. every single girl in every single scene, meaning that our hairdressers on the show had to pass us off to other people. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's right. We were all just kind of crammed into the room together and it was like, just make it work, make it work. Um, I loved Haley throwing the party. I love the idea that this is her sort of popularity coming out and she felt so nervous and insecure about it. I love that everybody did show up so she didn't um, yeah. end up feeling alone. Um, but then, of course, the, the cops came and the whole thing got smashed. And you had to hide your drinks in the bushes? And then we had to stash <laughs> our drinks in the bushes and that was it. The next thing you know, she's at the police station. Damn. Oh, Damn. God. Yeah. I don't, I'm trying to think if I was ever... You know, we had the police called on our parties when I lived in that haunted house in Wilmington. Manuel, did you, did you ever come over to my house? No. Girl, you lived it, in a haunted house? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like right after you left, I moved into it. Um, and we would have Halloween parties where the cops would show up. And and I, thankfully, like, James didn't answer the door because the rest of us had just turned 21. Like, we were barely skating by. Mm. Right. Otherwise, the bushes in downtown Wilmington would have been a mess. <laughs> uh, James gets his first job. Nathan gets his first yeah. job in this. What was your first job? Ooh. Uh, I believe, oh, I worked at mm, Muffins. Marvelous Muffins. <laughs> Yes, I love that. That's so good. Hillary, what was your first job? Oh, my God. I worked so many jobs trying to save up money to move to New York City. So I started at Sports Authority, which was like a nightmare. There was a man who was not a match for you, babe. This dude was a felon who (laughs) the rumor was he'd murdered someone and he worked in the back area where you would have to go do returns. And he was always like, you look like Nikki Kidman. And I was just like, oh, you don't know her well enough to call her Nikki. Um, (laughs) Nikki Kidman. And then I finally quit there and got a job at the supermarket, the same supermarket chain where my mother and my father met when she was a teenager and where my brothers all worked in the pharmacy. And it was just too much. And then I started um, working at a Buffalo Wing factory. And I started, I was like bartending. It wasn't totally legal, but it was the year Coyote Ugly came out. And I was like, I'm going for it. Did you audition for that? Girl, no, I was working in a real bar. I was like, (laughs) child. (laughs) The deal was I was allowed to pour the beer. I wasn't allowed to walk it to the table, which I think doesn't make any sense. Right. If you're the underage, around underage. would make more sense. Like, right. yeah, pick it up and walk it to the table, and that was it. You, but you had no business pouring it or being in contact with the open bottle. Tips are tips, friends. Yeah, I was yeah, a clean team. Right. I was a safe bet. What about you? You were making movies, Joy. Yeah, I mean, my first my first jobs were were TV jobs, like car, um, commercials and pilots and stuff like that. But my first regular non-circus job was um not circus <laughs> I, I worked at a um i think i worked at the french connection oh I, that's you a know, good like job the, um this the clothing store i think i was in there just like dressing the mannequins and I, all i wanted to do is do window dressing and then wow. when i moved to new york city um when i was done with my the soap opera that I was on, I got a, a regular normal job at a perfumery. And so I got to like make perfume for people all day, which is super fun. You That's had cool. told me when we first met that you were going to go work in a florist shop because you sent me flowers. Yes. You sent me flowers for something and you came to my house and there was baby's breath in there. And you were like, I told them not to put the baby's <laughs> breath in there. It's I hate tacky. baby's breath. Ugh, it's so tacky. Joy listen, rearranged listen, the flowers. Boys. I did. <laughs> Don't get your girl's flowers with baby's breath in them. Just take it out and then wrap that sh- in a brown paper bag or something. Don't leave the plastic on. Don't um, do the plastic. Don't but do Emmanuel- the plastic. No, I, I did work at a um, at a florist in, L- in L.A. That was my first job. I, I got to L.A. and I was like, I need a job. So I went into a florist shop and um, they hired me. It's a skill set that's lasted you forever. Was it a walk down memory lane to see Nathan get this job, Emmanuel, kicking it in the mall? 
<laughs> Mall rats. You know, watching it last night, I was like, wow, I remember, I remember that. And like the cleaning at the end of the night, mm. and, like you're there in the empty mall and it's kind of, you know, just like, huh. And then you're like, I got to get home on the bus. Which is like, I, yeah, it, it did bring back memories of that. <laughs> And what about that carousel, the infamous carousel in the mall? How did you feel about that? I, I mean, it was the first episode I was, I didn't rewatch that episode yet, but. Um, uh, but do I, you remember when we were filming it, like how you felt about it when you saw the script come in? And I don't know, what did you think? Uh, you know, I was like, well, I'm the, you know, I'm the seductress and the villain in this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess this is, this is what, uh what I'm doing. I just remember extensive wardrobe talks about what it was I was going to wear because I had to straddle him on the carousel, you know, like all this stuff. I was just like, oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Did you ever think when you were a kid and you were like, I want to be an actor that it would boil (laughs) down to like straddling wardrobe conversations? Oh, yeah. So when she straddles him and takes her top off, what bra should we wear? And um, also like, you know, like how stretchy should the skirt be so Ugh. that she can like really straddle them? Yeah, <laughs> not just like I mean, a polite exactly. side saddle. We were, no, <laughs> yeah, not western side. saddle. <laughs> we just, I just could not get over the fact that they were in a mall after hours and the carousel lights were still on and there were no security cameras. No one stopped them. I it was like, there were too no. many. By the way, the security guards at that mall were just like, cool. This is. Yeah, right. you guys yeah, see I'm the sure monitor? Like, this is fun. Let, let, guys. Them, let them go at it for a while. It's cool. We don't usually A4 get on the carousel, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, those scenes are always awkward and kind of, you know, whatever to shoot. And uh, yeah, it was what it was. I didn't think, oh, I mean, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it at the time. You know, I'm sure looking It back, was normal back then. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. In these days and times, that would have been a completely different conversation and, yeah. and a like, okay, we're rewriting this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also Nikki's a little bit older than us. We've talked about that as well. Was it clear that Nikki was in college? Because she says sometimes like tuition, but then she also talks about being a teenager. Did you know? <laughs> Do you I remember? Knew she was supposed to be a few years older. It was never really addressed like specifically in this you know in the scenes or in this it was sort of like yeah like referenced but not really mm. talked about so yeah yeah I like that she's still going to high school parties like yeah she's going to high school parties and it's seducing like high school boys oh my god you're the Matthew McConaughey it's like dazed and confused <laughs> yes that's so good <laughs> well uh Barbara had some um lingerie mm-hmm. action in this episode as well yeah. yes which um I think she we remembered her not wanting to do that I have to we have to ask her about it I'm not sure but there you know was, what she was pissed there... that she had to pull the shirt up over her head because it look it just is an awkward thing to do on camera yes yeah this would have been like a button thing yeah, yeah but button down I... would have been great yeah I like when but I it watched worked. that last night, it did kind of catch me off guard. I mean, I was like, okay, I get what they were going for, but like in my head, I was like, Ugh. yeah, but it felt like it just felt a little out of I, I it felt like a forced moment, not because of the acting, but the writing felt like a forced moment to me. Cause she was actually really upset and he was totally gaslighting her in that moment and you know, just do pulling all of his manipulative shit that suddenly now she's turned on by. I just wish there had been some sort of if he had, I don't know if there if the fight had had felt a little bit more like he was fighting for her in in some new way rather than him attacking her and suddenly you're now wrong, she wants you're to wrong, take you're her wrong, shirt you're off. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, there is a pheromone thing that I didn't understand as a young person, and now as an adult, I'm like, oh man chemicals are a real thing. Like you can be chemically attracted to a person who makes you fucking insane. Um, Maybe that's what it is. Maybe Dan has strong pheromone action. Yeah, it could be. It could be. I mean, and she was drinking. So I guess that sort of, you know, loosened her up a little bit with this whole whole conversation. (laughs) Moral of the story, friends. Don't drink with your ex-husband. Yeah. God. 
But if, you know, it was what really got me about it. I mean, when when they started making out, it was like, oh wow, that you know, the first time we get to see um, Dan and and Deb really being romantic with each other. That's not a tender thing, but like a passionate romance, which we'd never seen with them before. But what really got me is that at the end, when he comes back and pulls that classic narcissist of I'm the one leaving you now. Yeah. I'm going to bring you back in. Oh, he just keeps proving over and over. Yes. Well, it's like, yeah, I got, I got what I wanted. I wanted that one last sort of like, to see how great we used to be and you yeah. ruined it and now I'm here. I wanted you to want me again and for me to be able to show you what it's like for me to leave when you want me. Oh, it's just, he just keeps proving over and over how broken he is. This is why I've got a theory, guys. Your favorite body of water is, it resembles your personality, right? Like there are people that are like the ocean and they come and they come back to it and they go out and they come back mm. to it and they go out and they come back to it. I have always been a river person. The water's mm. never the same ever. It just keeps on running <laughs> downhill, man. And so once I'm gone, I'm gone mm. forever. It's oh, never coming God. back. And I'm saying yeah. to all the Debs out there, don't kiss them again. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just get it out of I'm your lake. system. I'm a lake person. I don't know what yeah. that means. What does that mean, Hillary? Um, deep waters. Ooh, so Ooh, deep. deep. Yeah. Waters. Sometimes you'll never touch the bottom. Whoa. Like they're a li- Whoa. Yeah. So the water Sometimes always- I'll just stay in places I shouldn't stay. <laughs> the water doesn't <laughs> I'm going to bring you a canoe. I'll, just <laughs> come, I'll come get come you. Come down joy. your river and bring me a fucking canoe. Like, over here. Yeah. <laughs> what, Emmanuel, what are you? What body of water are you? Um. I'd say I'm a mix between the, the, like a river and the ocean. Like I, I have been guilty of being the ocean before, but when I'm done mm-hmm. that wall, like there's no, like when I'm truly done, the wall comes up, it's over. There's no going back. Like I can't um, make my, like I, when somebody's crossed that line, I'm just like, okay, now, now it's really like, I, I, there's no going back for me. Cause that trust is broken. Everything. It's just too broken. It's when so, you're like the intercoastal waterway and you turn into salt water at a certain point, you went yeah. from being fresh water yeah. and now yeah. I'm salt water. Yeah. We're and then done. Then no salty. I'm salty, salty like, about this now. There, but then yeah, no. <laughs> uh, um, talking about salty, sad tears. Uh, Lucas, Telling Keith, I wanted you to be my dad. Um, this breakup mm. between God. Karen and Keith, we said while we were watching, we're like, it's like watching your parents get divorced, except they were never married. So you don't get the same yeah. grief process, you know? Like Nathan gets to have that grief process of my parents are a mess, but Lucas had fantasized about Karen and Keith being his parents. And now it's it's falling apart. That dream is dying. It's hard to watch a dream like that die, especially as a kid when you, 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 I mean, he had been holding on to that hope, I think, as much as Keith had. Mm -hmm. And it was hard to, it was hard to see that die. It was a really sweet moment too, between the two of them. I I was like, wow, that was really touching. And like, and for him as a, as a young man to go and actually have that conversation like how hard that must be too. Mm -hmm. Well, and you're getting to see multiple sides of Lucas because you were dealing with sexy Lucas in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing, you know, like the conversation you guys had on the porch a couple episodes ago and like watching him today be like, hey, listen, I kept your secret. I'm trying to be a good person. You know, Chad does a really, really good job at playing those little boy feelings. Of like, yeah. of like, I just want my parents to get along. I don't want my dad to leave. I don't, you know, this girl is going to make trouble. And I just really want Haley to have a nice party. And, oh, you know, when know. he goes into little boy mode, he doesn't really, I love that when he does that. Yeah, Me no, too. Not every dude's up for it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he does it very well. He really embraces that. And um, I think that's. What we loved about Lucas in the beginning, you know, the sort of college bad boy Lucas, we all were really thrown off track with. And it didn't it felt really insincere, probably for a reason, because this is Chad's sweet spot as an actor. I think being in this zone with um, the 
sincere, you know, a little, little, there's a little boy that wants to come out that, you know, is vulnerable. And I think that uh, he really did a nice job with that. Well, we didn't get to see you hold your baby in this episode, Emmanuel. Yeah. Um, but we saw Karen holding your baby, which is random, but a useful yeah. tool because it allowed us to visualize what Karen, Keith, and Lucas were when he was a baby. And it allowed us to visualize what they mm. potentially could be, except she's just not in love with him. Uh-huh. But did you did you feel at the end, like when she's fixing his tie <clears throat> and he finally, like he, or no, not, what, sorry, after that, when he comes back and says he got, he's got the job yeah. and it's finally real and he's leaving, I saw like a moment of sort of hesitation kind of like going, oh crap, this is, mm. maybe I screwed up. Like maybe like, yeah. wait a minute, this is like, I, I don't know how I feel about this. And there was, I don't know, like I saw that moment in her eyes and it was such, it was so beautifully played and so subtle, but it was like just her whole demeanor changed. Moira's really good at that. She's so good at subtext. She's so good at using her eyes to express what's not on paper. Yes. And that question mark, is what makes the performance, like, fun. You know, if we knew that Karen really didn't love him, we'd be like, okay, move on, next. You know, who's she going to kiss now? Um, But that question mark is real. Um, I don't know if you have gotten to interact with the little girl who played Baby Jenny. Have you guys ever met after, like... Oh, like, later? Yeah, Grace Holcomb. Well, there was was several babies when I was there. There was... There was you had a, a couple different ones? Yeah, there was a few different ones because, and then as she got older, then there were twins. And so I don't, <clears throat> no, I haven't. You would be so proud of her. She is in her freshman year of college. She oh, is like a nationally God. ranked golfer, like on like PGA, you know, like she's going to be. I love that she stayed in touch and tracked uh, tracked with her, Hill. That's well, awesome. Well, because her mother was a stand-in on Dawson's Creek and on our show. And so that's how oh. we got baby Jenny because her mom has been a part of our film community in Wilmington for years, but she is the most remarkable young woman. Like during the pandemic, she started a candle company to raise money for charity. And she's just wow. so cool. She's so, you would be so proud, Nikki, of your little baby. Cause she's so <laughs> My little girl. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't remember what happens, but does Nikki maintain custody of Jenny? Like what happens? I feel like I disappear. Like I just up and go one day. I, yeah, can't I think so too. I think you yeah. do too. I think, I I think it's like, I think it that. actually seems like you're getting your shit together and it's actually going to start to, something's going to work and then you just disappear again. Yeah. Because women are the devil. Of course. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's, we can tell oh, who writes God. what episodes, guys. <laughs> so many. I'll tell you what though, Nikki and Brooke in that bar was so delicious. Ah. I really did enjoy watching all that wickedness just, you know, it was so fun. It was so fun watching you guys in this The episode. one-liners between you two. I could watch that whole show. It's like the dark Laverne and Shirley. Yes. <laughs> well, the the, the, um, the comment that she makes, like the brush off she gives to the guy before. She, Oof, I, rough. I like, oh, that is, that is. Damn. <laughs> it was delicious. That was yeah. harsh. Yeah, well, we could talk about Sophia because she's not here. Oh, they yeah. gave Sophia so much heavy lifting because she would have to go from being so emotional in, yeah. in certain scenes to also like scathing and evil and brutal, you know, with the one liners. Yeah. And the scripting for Brooke is so fun in this episode because it really does. The, there's a wide range of stuff that she has to cover. Um And that defense mechanism that young women put up is a strong play for Brooke. It's like, well, if you're going to hurt my feelings, I'm going to make sure I cut your head off. Um, It's the praying mantis move. And Mm -hmm. I'm drawn to it. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like Nikki is being self-destructive. And anyone who can see through the veneer of like, oh, I'm tough, I'm tough, I'm bad, I'm lippy. Um, can see that this is a girl that is hurting deeply. Yeah. And did you have any conversations with anybody about what that hurt was? Or or you just had to make it up on your own? I just made it up on my own. I mean, I think um, 
yeah, I don't, I don't think it was like a specific conversation with anyone, like any of the writers or, or people involved. I think it was just something that I, you know, I recognized that, that there was a, a lot of scars and, <clears throat> and history there and to, to bringing that to the table was important in sort of the, you know, the uh, evolution of the character and, and, uh, and just her, you know, uh, presence on screen. What was people's reaction yeah. to you? Like when these things yeah, aired, do you remember? People would cut, like there would be people would be like, oh my God, you're Nikki. I love to hate you. <laughs> and like, you know, like they, they, they would come up to me and be like, oh my God, I hate your character so much, but it's so much fun to watch. And I was like, uh, that's you. great. <laughs> okay. That's so great. Wait. So, okay. What is, what was crazier working on a teen drama or working on two and a half men? Cause you, you have been able to handle a lot of different personalities. I mean, well, the behind the scenes <laughs> stuff counts too. Yeah. I mean, I don't like, see, I generally have stayed like with the two and a half men stuff. I stayed out of that whole, you know, like I was there. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. something I was directly involved with. Like it was, yes, I was involved with it, but not that way, you know? Um, so it didn't, it didn't change my relationships with anyone on the show or with Charlie or with, you know, and then, um, so yeah, I don't know. I, t- I tend to try to stay out of the thick of the drama and, and then yeah, I- you've always been very professional. I mean, as I definitely remember when you came down to Wilmington that you were so, you were just so professional. And that's one of the reasons why we were so intimidated by you too. Cause you just, you knew exactly what you were there to do and you showed up and you were kind to everyone and, you know, knew, w- nobody had to tell you how to find your mark or, I mean, you were just a consummate professional and you weren't involved in any of the behind the scenes drama or anything. And, you know, it's really, it's nice to, it was nice to be around that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I thought, I think also too, like I wasn't th- for, for One Tree Hill, I wasn't there, you know, for every episode. I'm sure when it's different when you're there day in and day out for months and months and years at a time, inevitably there's, there's stuff that comes up and, yeah. you know, situations and issues come up that you deal with appropriately at the time but yeah and also being young on a show like that is a completely it's like high school but with money (laughs) (laughs) yeah oh totally terrible combination totally i know that's the worst it's not a good combo can we um i I, well we can always come back to that too sorry i just wanted to uh because we haven't talked about peyton yet in this episode and i i just wanted to say that like it was really nice to see peyton happy and like having a great time like she she and you and lucas had such a good rapport and you know there was like great music going on and you just seemed so light and happy until the very end when you know nikki was like dun, dun, dun. Right, you, know. you know the happy stuff is harder for me to play i always am really judgmental of my own performances with happy stuff because i know i'm really it. yeah 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 and but the one thing that i like about it is that it makes Peyton more juvenile, you know? Um, It's really hard to, it's really hard to sexualize or just kind of um, misinterpret like a a goofy kid, you know? Mm, And when Peyton's like being happy and just like, this man's neat, mister. um, I appreciate those moments of childishness, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, for sure. I like that she's committing to this like platonic thing. And I I believe her. Like I believe that she's legitimately trying to be platonic with Lucas because yeah. if she can just make that work, if she can just like prove like, hey, we're just friends, regardless of how I've felt in the past, regardless of how I may secretly still feel, maybe Brooke will take me back. You know, it's yeah, it's like she's doing the work. I loved it. But have you guys ever done those scenes, though, where you have to pretend like you're having the best time ever or that you love something so much, like metal? Um, <laughs> this is an 80s metal, guys. It's the coolest. And you just, I don't know, I always feel so phony doing it. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's way easier for me to cry. <laughs> I actually, like, watching the episode, I was like, wow, she's just so, like, cool and fun and free. Like, it yeah. seems so free. In, yeah. in not like in very comfortable and in your just in your body and just kind of like it, it I, I was watching those scenes I was like wow it's really they're 
really nice to watch. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't come across as disingenuous or, or um, that you're not actually happy about it, and and that you don't actually love metal. I <laughs> big metal head. <laughs> I love metal. Can you imagine me going to pick my son up from school, like just like meddled out, Slipknot. <laughs> Get in the car, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do we have uh, any fan questions? Where, where are we at Ooh, with I that? I like fan questions. Ooh, these are interesting. Well, we're talking about music. Go for it, Hill. Okay, so Ashton asks, so many of the bands, artists, and songs I loved in high school were featured on the show. Jimmy Eat World, Fall Out Boy, Jack's Mannequin, the list goes on. So my question to you guys is, what was the soundtrack to your high school experience and who were the heavy hitters on your mixtapes and mix CDs? That's great a great question. question. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jinx. yes. Dave Matthews. I mean, the Under the Table and Dreaming Dave Matthews album was everything. I remember yeah. we took a senior trip to Greece. That was our class trip. What? Senior trip. I know. Crazy. I went to Myrtle Beach, Joy. You went to Greece. <laughs> 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 I went to Myrtle Beach. That's so awesome. Um, and I had that soundtrack on my Walkman, and I just remember walking the streets of Greece. Like, listen, I was totally brokenhearted about a boy, of course, and he was on the trip, but not paying any attention to me. And it was just, it was Aww. like the most heartbreaking romantic thing ever to be wandering through these, you know, <sighs> Grecian streets listening to Dave Matthews Band. But that, and then that Jewel album and Fiona Apple, when Fiona Apple came out with, Girl. was it Criminal? I can't remember the name yeah. of the Slow album. Like Honey off that album is oh, lethal that whole record yeah and the jewel um pieces of you album those those three were cheryl crow too um but yeah that was the major soundtrack of my life what about you guys Emmanuel? hey um i mean alanis morissette when she first mm-hmm. oh yes that was a, i remember listening to a lot of alanis morissette and then madonna like i was a big 80s music yes. person so yes. like anything 80s but Madonna I, I distinctly remember and I was like really young I was maybe like in second grade or something and I I had my little tape recorder thing with the Madonna um or no it wasn't second grade it was like maybe fifth grade because I'd gone to the mall and like saved up enough money to like oh. buy uh you know the Madonna like a virgin album yeah. <laughs> was it a cassette so I'm like, <laughs> this people like a virgin in my bed like dancing around my dad walks in he's like and he's like, what are you listening to? And I'm like, Madonna, like a virgin. He's like, nope. You shouldn't be <laughs> dancing to things you don't know about. And then he just like shut the door and walked out. <gasps> I was so confused. And now I look back and I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, was, that was a rough one. I was a little bit lost the first couple of years of high school. And then I really got obsessed with androgyny and discovered Boy George, David Bowie, Annie Lennox, like all in one fell Mm. swoop and just felt like I'd found my safe space. And I had pictures of Boy George from Culture Club all over my bedroom, all over my locker. I had a, a whole like block of class that was just student government. And I used that time not to run our school effectively, but to use the printer to print out pictures of Boy George. And so my... (laughs) So it totally tracks that, like, the second I got to Manhattan at 18 years old, I was like, where are the drag clubs? Tell me where to go. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah, that was that it. was my scene. Just driving in my Great. Cutlass, listening to Culture Club was the jam. Um, but let's talk about then, like, what would our characters be doing in 2021? You know, we talked a number of times about how unsettling it was that people just kept walking into... Uh, Peyton's, Peyton's house. house. This episode was gross. Just everybody just all, at all hours walking into I her know, house. Like turning around and finding Brooke standing there over her bed with the you know <laughs> light shining through the, the slats in the windows shades. I was like, I get that she's about to lay down. It's going to be a sweet moment, but geez. it's a bad way to kick it off. So I think that Peyton in her adulthood is going to be very, um, there's going to be a lot of triggers for her. You know, like, mm, yeah, no one's coming into her daughter's room, you know, no door open, way. feet on the floor. We yeah. have monitors, ring doorbells everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Peyton's everywhere. whole house. 
It's just ring cameras everywhere. I think Haley is Haley's been such a goody two shoes her whole life that she probably is like living out some wild years right now. Mm, that's, God. My, that's my instinct. Throwing parties all the time. This was just that's the first right. taste. All kinds of parties. What's Nikki up to? Did she ever get herself together? Um, I feel like she she's uh in like twenty gosh, twenty years later. Um I mean, I feel like she's living in a small town, working at a diner, trying to make Ooh. ends meet. And just, you know, like she's just living a very sort of quiet life and maybe maybe still I mean, you know, still facing her demons and hasn't quite Interesting. worked that. She's not like still that. at the pool hall. Now she's like the salty broad in the corner. Hey, the kids. Corn drinks, sour cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> you, need a, you need a fake ID, kid? I know where to get one. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm good. into that. Okay, so Amanda, tell us what you're doing now, because that's what I want to know. What are you working on now? I'm uh, well right now. I was working on um, Supergirl earlier this year, and then congrats, um, that's great. Thank you. And then I did like an independent movie, and then I spent the summer showing my horse and <gasps> yes! playing with ponies. So wow. that's basically, you know, now it's like pouring rain here, um, and I'm kind of like the horse loves it here. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna stay here for a while and hang out because there's more space and just yeah. you know. It's, where it's where is your fun. horse normally? Um, well, I was in LA. Um, so you shipped shipped him up or her up yeah, to Vancouver? She came up, um, last year, at the end of last year, I shipped her up. Uh, when you I you should have just and- ridden her. I Aww. would have watched a documentary <laughs> of Emmanuel just riding this beautiful Me like too. stallion <laughs> up, across the border. <laughs> Or is it yes. a mare? What's what's the right it's word? Mare. It's, it's a mare. mare. Yeah. yeah, I'm learning, guys. It's a lady. Um, what's her name? She, Bunny. Oh, my Bunny. horse's name is Buddy. Buddy. <gasps> yeah. So, what kind of horse do you have? He's a quarter horse. <gasps> he's just a dark, dark, dark brown, almost black quarter horse, and he's a, a 19 years old. So he's he's you know he's had a good long life, but. Um, he's just kind of happy to be grazing right now. He's not, he, he's kind of an asshole. He oh, hates when I ride him because he's just like, I'm just <laughs> not into it. I've, I've put in my time, woman. We like ordinary but his things. Name, right. His name was Bunny when I got him and I just didn't like it for a male horse. It, I wasn't yeah. into it and it didn't seem to fit his personality at all, to be honest, because <laughs> he's an asshole. Yeah. So I called him Buddy because I didn't want him to like at 19 years old, get a new name. But I right. feel like Buddy was a little Close closer enough. to. Yes, yeah. this is the Christmas movie I want this year, where Emmanuel's horse teaches Joy's horse the true meaning of Christmas and gets him to stop being so grumpy. <laughs> Nikki could disappear and be a cowgirl. That's an alternate lifestyle. Like if oh, she yeah. went out west to the like barrel Santa racer. Fe. Oh. Yeah, she became a barrel. That's what, yes. There we go. Mm-hmm. I like that better. I like a brighter future for her. And she found herself because she started working with horses and, like therapeutically and she yeah. you know, and she found healing in that and then yes. decided that that was her true passion and and uh, it was uh, healthy for her to be in that world. She could totally show up on Yellowstone. Like her and Beth would be best yes. friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. I love, it. I love it. Should we spin the wheel, guys? Yeah, let's do it. Da-da-da-da. All right, you know how this works, Manuel? We have our most likely two every week and Uh, this week it is most likely to be listed on the fortune 500 Ooh, so we pick a cast member a real life person and a character who would be most likely to make it on the fortune 500 oh james lafferty is he excellent with money he makes very good choices with money and why does mouth work for every answer (laughs) yeah i mean mouth is good at pretty much everything um, who made money? I mean, Brooke made money with Clothes Over Bros, right? Or what That's happened? That's true. To- yeah, yeah. That was a big company. I was gonna say Brooke. Yeah, yeah. That does track. And Sophia, by the way, Sophia has three hundred jobs at any given point. Hence, her not being yeah. here today. She is the most <laughs> entrepreneurial person I've ever met in my life. And I'm just like, I'll have what she's yeah. having. Well, yeah. isn't she in Canada too? Like I heard on the because I was you know stalking you guys on the episodes, um, trying to figure <laughs> out what what happens on on Drama Queens. But I heard she was in Canada. I'm like, oh, she is. She's in she Toronto. Oh. Um, yeah, she's there. A couple of our friends are up there right now, and yeah, all the fun stuff's happening in Canada. When are you all coming to New York? 
I'm just sitting here well, waiting. That's why originally I came up here was just because this was the only place that was kind of open. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was like, you know what? I need to get out of Dodge for a little while. And then I just was like, I really like it up here and everything's virtual. So like, what doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. I, it's just so great to see you and talk with you again. And um, it always makes me happy to, to have, our family back on this show. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. And I like, I was so excited. I was like, yes, I'll come do this. Oh my this God. Like so much fun. Yay. And then when I listened to the episodes, I was like, this is really going to be fun. <laughs> yes. I loved fighting with you. I loved, remember they made us like crash through that coffee table. And that was the first time I'd ever had to do like a really big stunt before. Right. <laughs> and it was scary. Didn't you like get cut by the fake balsa wood? One of us got cut, but we wanted to be tough girls. I think so. I, I don't, I, I remember being really sore after like the next mm-hmm. couple of days, like I'd worked out like 12 hours straight because we <laughs> shot that for like all day long. And, you know, and then the, the 300 the, takes, the little, yeah, 300 takes all angles everywhere. I mean, it was fun though. Like it was a fun, like the energy was so high that yeah. day. It was really good. No, um, we had a great then, time. Like, then you just kind of go, oh, well, you, you to have to it. come to a convention. Because then I we can do pictures. It. Yeah, I feel like fans yes. need they need that photo. We'll just put a coffee table in front of us, and the fan <laughs> <laughs> it'll be pre broken. So all you have to do is just lay down on it. You got a problem with me? Yeah. Um, I love it so much, Emmanuel. You're the best. Everybody, give it up for Emmanuel. Oh, thank, you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Hey, everybody, tune in next episode number twenty one, the leaving song. I still, I still don't know what's going to happen. I, I love this rewatch because I'm surprised danger. every week. <laughs> danger, danger! Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, you Bye. guys too. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at Drama Queens OTH or email us at Drama Queens at iHeartRadio.com. See, See you next time. time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl. Drama girl. Cheering for the right team. Drama girl.